This is section 4.5 and this is distribution of the sample means with the sigma, the standard deviation, unknown. So this says if a sample is taken from a population that is known to be normally distributed and we don't know the population standard deviation sigma, then we calculate the sample standard deviation s or we're told the sample standard deviation s and we use a thing called t-scores. Um, now, t-scores are similar to z-scores. They just give you a different value when they look the values up on a table. And the reason is, is because if you don't know the population standard deviation, then we use the sample standard deviation, which is an estimate for the population standard deviation. So we're not as sure of our results, so it's a lower probability. Now, if the sample size is greater than or equal to 30, then the central limit theorem still applies and the distribution of the sample means is approximately normal even if we don't know what the original distribution of scores look like. So we only have to be concerned uh, if the original distribution is normal or not only if the sample size is less than 30. And that's whether we know the population standard deviation or we just know the sample standard deviation. But again, you can tell you use t-scores or not very quickly. And that all depends if we know the population standard deviation or not. So if we just know the sample standard deviation, which is true in most cases, we only know the sample standard deviation, then we end up using t-scores. And what you'll find out is that t-scores are actually used much more often than z-scores. And that's because typically you don't know the population standard deviation. So let's go ahead and do a few problems with this. First of all, I want to point out that the value that you get from a t-score is not the same as a z-score. For example, over here on the Excel sheet, uh, for a z-score of 1, and it, this sheet knows that you're using a z-score because there's nothing in for the sample size, the n. So the probability that a score is less than one standard deviation above the mean, uh, if you don't... Uh, this is assuming that you know the population standard deviation and you're using z-scores. Well, that's 0.84. But if you have a sample size in here, then, for example, if I, let's say, I have a sample of 10 people in here, now the probability is less than that. It's only 0.82. Again, looking, here is 0.82, and if we delete that out, you get, what, 0.84. Now, as your sample size increases, you're more sure that your sample standard deviation is a good estimate for your population standard deviation, and you'll get closer to z-score values. Like you can see, this is 0.8413. Well, at a sample size of 10, you only have 0.8282. A sample size of 30, you're up to 0.83, and, and there's nothing you know, sacred about the number 30 here. If we jump it up to 100, you have 0.840, so it's even closer to the z-score value. Again, like here's 0.840, and here with uh, no sample size, where you'd be using z-scores, you have 0.841. Okay, again, here's 0.840. If I go up to 1,000, you get 0.84122. If I take this out again, it's 0.8413. So as your sample size increases, t-scores get closer and closer to z-scores. And that's, that's the way these work here. So let's do a real small one here. And you can see the picture adjusts too. If I put just a sample size of 2, then you can see that the distribution is farther, more spread out, and you, you have less per, uh, pro probability that a score is in that range. Okay, so anyway, that's where you can do these problems here. If you said, if it says, what's the probability that, like down here, what's the probability that t is less than one with a sample size of ten? Just put one in here, put a sample size of ten, and now it's using t scores, and uh, that answer would be, since it says less than, would be 0.8282, and you can see that there on the on the uh, in the textbook, and that's what that part of it is about. Now if you're between two t-scores, then just use this area right here where you can do the area to in between. So you would put in your lower t-score, let's say negative 1.5, upper t-score 1.5, and let's say the sample size, for example, 2a is 25, and now you get 0.853. Now with z-scores, if I take this out, it automatically does z-scores. If I take this out, you get 
See, because it's a higher probability because you, you now uh, are assumed to know the population standard deviation. So here with 25 in there, it's a little bit lower. And if it's smaller sample size, it's going to be smaller. Let's say it's 5. Now it's down to 0.79. So that's where you do those type of problems. Now, um, uh, this one, 2C, by the way, is the opposite of, of the last one that we did. This one says between two uh, t-scores is negative 1.5 This says greater than 1.5 and less than negative 1.5. So to do this one, this is exactly the opposite of this problem. So this answer here is 1 minus the previous answer up here. And 1 minus 0.8533 is this value right here. Now these, where they give you the mean and standard deviation, like example 3, well, you'll use the second section of the sheet to do that. That's this right here. So this is to the left or to the right. And this is between two Z or T scores. Okay. So um, here it says the mean height of American men is 69.2. So I'll put that right here, 69.2. Uh, and you have a random sample of 40 men. So down here, 40. And it says uh, selected, and the sample standard deviation is 2.9. So that 2.9 doesn't go here at sigma. It goes here at S. So that's where the 2.9 goes because that's your sample standard deviation. And then it says find, uh, uh, and find the probability the mean height for this, this sample is greater than 70. So put that right in here for your x of 70 right there. And it's actually an x bar, and I think you'll see that on the sheet as an x bar right here too. x bar or x would go right there. So now it said greater than 70. So you'd be looking to the probability to the right. So the answer to this problem is 0 0.044457. If you put this 2.9 up here, you will get the wrong answer. It would be a little bit different because then it's assuming that you, you know the population standard deviation and it's going to use a z-score. But now it's using a t-score because we only know the sample standard deviation. So that's how you do that problem. This is the same type of thing on example 4 except it's a betweener. So you would do that over here. And again, you don't know the population standard deviation on this problem. It says uh, the sample standard deviation for the 10 bottles was 0.2. So that 0.2 would go right here. And uh, your uh, value for the lower X bar is $1.14. The higher is $1.17. The mean, when you read through, was $1.16. And this was from a sample of just 10 bottles. So that's down here. You would put 10 in for the end. And you would get this probability between right there. It calculates your two t-scores. See, if this 0.2 wasn't your sample standard deviation, if, if it was a known uh, population standard deviation, then this will change to t-scores. I mean, sorry, it will change to z-scores. Watch. If I take this out here and I put the 0.2 here, this now says z-scores. Now, they're the exact same values. But the probability is looked up on a Z table, which gives you 0.1869. But that's not the right answer. The right answer for this problem is that we know the sample standard deviation is 0.2. And you're using T scores, and it looks it up on a T table, Excel does. And you get this value right here. OK. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's take a look at this. Um, it says, note, since we don't know the population standard deviation, the Excel sheet knows to use t-scores. See, and that's what we did. The problem is similar to example 1 of 4.4. Example 1 on 4.4, we knew the population standard deviation, and the Excel sheet knew to use z-scores. So that's good. OK, this is now the problem from the last section, but we can actually do it uh, on the sheet. So we have this raw data here, and uh, we would put that raw data in and let me go to that. And